All right, now, I'm not going to say much about the Emperor Concerto because it's the easiest piece in the world to listen to. It is so beautiful and there's really no problem to talk about. It's interesting to think about the context in which the piece was written. Napoleon had just entered Vienna and attacked Vienna and uh, Beethoven was devastated that his town had been attacked by enemy soldiers and he wrote, we have passed through a great deal of misery. I tell you that since May 4th, which is when the, the French army came to Vienna, I have brought into the world little that is connected, only here and there a fragment. The whole course of events has affected me, body and soul, nor can I have the enjoyment of country life so indispensable to me. What a disturbing, wild life around me. Nothing but drums, cannons, men, misery of all sorts. That's wartime. And that was what he was experiencing. He was also in deep financial trouble and he almost took a job in Westphalia, which was in Germany and away from Vienna, in order to serve Bonaparte's brother. No, was it brother? Yes, Jerome. And he almost took that job because the pay was very, very high. And then Prince Lobkowitz uh, and the Archduke Rudolf were so embarrassed at the idea that their greatest composer was going to be whisked away to Germany and go, go to work for the enemy that they gathered together and decided to give Beethoven enough money so that he wouldn't have to ever worry again. And, and this is what Prince Lobkowitz wrote, pay close attention. As it has been demonstrated that only one who is free from care as possible can devote himself to a single department of activity and create works of magnitude which are exalted and which ennoble art, the undersigned have decided to place Herr Ludwig van Beethoven in a position where the necessities of life shall not cause him embarrassment or clog his powerful genius. I hope you all take that to heart and take musicians into your care. <laughs> Last night and on Thursday night at the concert, Prince Lobkowitz came to the concert. He was there. I mean, it wasn't him, actually. It was uh, one of his ancestors, uh, Prince uh, William Lob Lobkowitz. But it was very interesting because Coriolan Overture was performed in his home and so was the Emperor Concerto for the first time. So that's very exciting. Anyway, Beethoven was in an extremely good mood as a result of that. He was elated because he never had to worry again. His financial worries were over. There's a famous story which I actually told the prince, which was that Goethe and Beethoven were standing in a park together talking and Prince Lofkowitz passed by and Goethe bowed deep and Beethoven stood like this. And Goethe said, but you didn't bow to the prince. And, and Beethoven said, ah, nonsense. He'll be long forgotten. They'll remember Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> Beethoven was the first person to be supported independently so that he wasn't a servant in the house of somebody else. He was an independent person. And so he could stand proudly when the prince passed by. He was the first one. He went through the front door. The other musicians all went through the servants' court. Quarters. So we hear that in, in this music. It's enormously exuberant. The way it begins is simply unbelievable. It begins with a great roulade for the, for the piano, and then another one, and then another one, as if to say, here I am. And then the orchestra plays, and then the piano actually continues to play. And this is very interesting because Bob Levin, Robert Levin, uh, told me that Beethoven wrote that he wanted the piano to play even when the orchestra was playing, kind of continuo. And he does it very discreetly, but he's nevertheless there all the time, which is a very, very interesting thing. I haven't completely made up my mind whether it's right with a great big instrument like that, but he does it very, very discreetly.